Hey, Zach, how you doing? I'm really well, Cody. How you doing? I'm doing well. You got a nice, even fancy black backdrop over there. That's oh, nice. yeah, no, we spare no expense. <laughs> no, well, I appreciate you. I know you've got, you know, busy schedule, so I appreciate you taking a few minutes uh, to My do pleasure, this. man. Absolutely. Thank you. You know, what first led you to the story, to the, the movie? How did that process kind of first take shape? Yeah. Well, the, the truth is, uh, yeah, I, I was always interested in the story. I was interested in the story since I was, uh, what, what, what did Curtin and I say? It was since I was a slightly younger version of myself and he was a slightly younger version of himself. And, uh, and he was making all this history happen. I was very well aware of it. And I was very inspired by it all, like a, like a lot of us were. Um, <clears throat> but the truth is, I, I actually wasn't really even a, uh, aware of American Underdog. I, I knew a little bit about that there was a production going on, but I was un, unavailable for it. Uh, Pre-pandemic, okay. that movie was gearing up. I had other projects that I was attached to, so uh, it wasn't on my radar until the pandemic happened. And then the Irwin, bro, uh, the Irwin boys, who I was already um, kind of uh, uh, working on another project with, they said, hey, listen, we're going to spool up American Underdog again in the pandemic. We know you're available now you've always been one of our top choices. Would you be open to doing this, to doing this role? And I said, well, like, you know, like I just told you, you've been very inspired by the story, but you know, it all starts with the script and they sent me the script and it was gangbusters. It was such a fantastic script. And uh, I was like, yeah, let's, let's, let's go do this. Let's start training to be a quarterback immediately. You know, I think most people, if they, if they hear your name now, they think Shazam and they yeah. think this, you know, that's, that's, you know, it's in your Twitter profile. It's in, you know, it's, it's who you are as a, as a character for a sure. lot of people. Yeah. And so what was that transition like to go from a production like that um, to maybe a smaller scale production where we're still telling a huge story? Oh yeah. Um, well, I mean, you know, fortunately I, I came up doing a lot of smaller scale productions in order to get to the big scale production Shazam. So um, <clears throat> that wasn't being able to kind of shift into, into that kind of mode wasn't difficult. Moreover, I actually, in some ways, I kind of prefer a smaller scale production because you tend to know everyone a little bit more. You know, if you have a $150 million, $200 million budget and all these different departments and all these different people that are working in those departments, there's a good chance you're probably not going to meet a lot of them. But if you're doing a, you know, $20, $30 million movie, you know, everyone's kind of like in it together. You feel the village aspect of it a little bit more. I would say, you know, probably the most difficult thing was just, I, I had never, I had never really played, uh, a real person who's really still alive right now mm. that anyone can turn on the television and start comparing and contrasting me and him like that is a little daunting, you know? Um, so that, that was, a, that was an interesting challenge. And obviously learning how to throw a spiral at 40 uh, is not the, the most ideal. Yeah. Um, Cause nobody, like I didn't, I didn't really have a dad growing up. I never really had anybody like throw, teaching me how to throw a football. I could throw a baseball all day long and, and play baseball, a little baseball growing up. But you know, when throwing a spiral is a whole different concept, the, the mechanics of it, the gears of it, how your, how your body needs to sit with it, how your arm is supposed to come through with it and the follow through and everything. So that was a little daunting too, but I think we, I think we got it there. I think I, you know what, at the end of the day, I, I was on that field with a whole bunch of actual other football players and, uh, and I would get, you know, like some pats on the back and like, Hey man, you know, pretty good job. That's all I was hoping for. I, I, sure. I all I wanted was for all of those real football players to be like, you know what, not bad. That's, that was good. And, uh, and Kurt was happy enough with the performance. He felt like I was, you know, given, given good Kurt vibes. So, uh, you know, I think, I think it all came together. Yeah, no. And I, and I have, uh, I had the privilege of, of looking, watching the movie early. Oh, and so lovely. I, okay, cool. I thought, uh, I thought it looked good. Um, I, I'm curious, was it like 90, was it hundred percent you, you know, in the shots of throwing the football, was it, Oh gosh. Brought in real uh, Kurt to throw. No, 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 no. Well, there is one shot with Kurt in the movie. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but really, we, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. There's one shot where <clears throat> it was actually the last night of shooting, but we, you know, you kind of shoot out of order the various scenes, sure. but we were shooting this one scene and, and uh, they needed an insert of my hand. And I was like, no, no, no. And Kurt and Brenda were there. I was like, no, 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 Kurt, get over here. So it, it's, it's, it's actually pretty obvious if people are watching, but there's, there's clearly an insert of, Kurt's hand instead of mine. Okay. Uh, and it's all like, you can tell because it's all like mangled, you know, his, his, his knuckles <laughs> and everything from being a quarterback for so long. Well, I actually had, I had two doubles. I had one that was kind of much more there for the throwing aspects. And then I had one that was much more there for like literally getting leveled by linebackers yeah. moments. Not that I still didn't do a lot of throwing and also not that I didn't take a lot of hits myself, but you know, there's certain specials that you really got to get, you know, perfectly on, on point. So 
Um, I don't know. I don't know what the ratio is, but hopefully nobody knows. Hopefully everybody looks at it yeah. and goes, I couldn't tell the difference between one and the other. So, and that, no. then we know we did a good job. Yeah, I'll be honest. I mean, I, I did not. So I think it worked. Hey. Um, and, you, and, and you mentioned, um, you know, learning how to throw a spiral at 40 um, and, and be more comfortable maybe in these intimate productions. And I feel like that probably lends itself to the story because when I watched it, to me, it wasn't so much a football movie as like a, a story about family or parenthood or marriage. I mean, did you yeah. find that, you know, the chemistry with that kind of story was evident when you were doing oh, this yeah. production? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's it's there in the script. You know, you read the script and you you're moved by all of these things that we all already knew. This story about Kurt and, you know, working at a grocery store and arena football and making the NFL later on and, you know, as, a, as an older rookie and then taking his team to the Super Bowl and winning and all that jazz. We all kind of knew that. And I knew that when I was reading the script. But the script spends more time, you know, definitely, we definitely have a lot of cool football stuff in the movie, but yeah. it's, you know, I, I've been telling people for a while, it's like, you know, it's 25% football, but it's 75% real life. It's, it is, it's, it's, mm. it's, it's falling in love. It's romance. It's then, you know, what does that relationship look like when it starts becoming real? And there's like an actual family unit that starts being created. And, you know, what, what is it like for Kurt to then, you know, be a part of helping support that family and love that family through thick and thin and, their, you know, their, their tough years when they were, you know, literally pinching pennies and trying to get, get for gas money. I mean, that is the, that is really the heart, the, the bulk of what the story is about. I think it's important because American underdog, obviously <clears throat> the, the easy visual is, well, you know, American underdog is cursed. That's what this movie's about. But, but the reality is there are many underdogs in the movie. Kurt is one of them. Brenda is another Zach, her, yeah. oldest son the fact that he is into this day i mean he's such an incredible young man who is still thriving still has his struggles and you know and and his handicaps but um he was an underdog the whole time and yet and it was his and kurt's relationship really zach and kurt's relationship that was i think a huge part of galvanizing his relationship even with brenda and with and with their, that whole family and with their love so that was a a really cool thing to to jump into because to be perfectly honest you know, in, in most of my career, I've gotten to play such fun characters. Um, but a lot of times there's a, there's a, you know, there's a more of a, of a comedic element uh, to the stories or, or more levity to it. And I want to do more drama. I want to do, you know, more uh, um, uh, productions, more stories that are, that, that, I don't know, that don't feel so good all the time that you sit in this uncomfortableness of like, Ugh, like it's hard, but because, yeah. you know, what you're trying to do is you're trying to say, hey, we see you, everyone out there that is also going through these struggles. I think that this story is incredibly relatable, you know, maybe more particularly now than ever because of the amount of struggling that people have gone through in the pandemic. A lot of working class regular folks who are just trying to make ends meet. I mean, it's really a, you know, the movie is very much a love story to the working class, to middle America. Like, you know, sometimes your dreams take a while to get to and you got to fight your ass off to get there. But don't give up that hope. Don't give up that fight. Keep believing in yourself. Have faith in a higher power. Put the work in. You know, it, it's all there. And uh, and I think that, you know, being able to be a part of inspirational, true stories like that is, is uh, I don't know, it's powerful. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned, I mean, the faith aspect is obviously, you know, with the Kingdom Story Company and the Irwin yeah. Brothers, that's, uh, yeah. you know, they're not hiding that that's part of the story. And I don't think it's like beat you over the head with it in this movie. I think it's, no. you know. No, and, that, I, and by the way, and that was that was kind of uh, uh, the everybody. It was a prerequisite for everyone, you know. That the Irwin boys, obviously, yeah, they have a reputation of uh, and a great reputation of, of of making very good faith faith based types of movies. But nobody wanted. Even the Warners were like, this this if this starts coming down to us talking about Jesus the whole time, we're making the wrong movie. We're, we we're, it, we should never shy away from the, the reality of their faith, but that's just a part of everything that went into all of their journey. And so to be more subtle and poetic with that, I think was such a beautiful choice. And, every, and that was everyone's choice. And I think we, I think we, we walked that line. Well, I think that we met, yeah. there's never anything, uh, like you said, heavy handed about it. It's true to them. It's true to the story. Um, it's part of that inspirational side of everything. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm curious how much you drew from your own life and, you know, obviously you're, you're portraying Kurt here and then yeah. their story, but, um, it, that's, that's part of your character. And, and, uh, I'm just curious how much you drew from your own life to kind of inform that. 
Totally. Yeah, I don't know. Great question. Uh, I, I think a good bit. I mean, the truth is, as an actor, almost no matter what role you're playing, you're drawing from some of your life, some of your past experiences. It's uh, It gives you a touchstone. It also gives you, you know, tr particularly an emotional touchstone that you can go back to and feel something to then kind of bring into that character. Um, you know, some people are like hardcore method actors and they just want the real thing that happened to that person to happen to them in that moment, right? So like yeah. they're playing a the moment and the character they're playing is drunk. Well, they're really going to get drunk and they're going to go do some, yeah. you know, crazy thing, whatever it is. Um, but, and, and sometimes that's helpful. I do, as an actor, I, I kind of, I think there's a lot of different things you can, there's a lot of different tools in the tool, in the, in the toolbox that you can go to. In this particular um, job or in this story or in this character, you know, my faith, my journey as an actor was very, very similar to Kurt's as a, as an athlete. Ever since I was four years old, I knew, I really believed that God was like, this is what you're going to do. This is your, this is, I could feel the vision put upon my head, put in my head and put on my heart. I could feel it in my bones. Even when, you know, I tell my parents or other people like, yeah, I'm going to be an actor when I grow up. And there'd be a lot of like patting on the head and sure you will. And you know, all that kind of stuff, because what are the odds? They're, the odds yeah. are so stacked against you. What are the odds of Kurt becoming not just an NFL quarter, like in the beginning of the movie, when I'm kind of laying out, like, here's the odds of not just be making it into the NFL, but becoming a starting quarterback in the NFL and then taking your team all the way to the Super Bowl in the NFL and then winning NFL MVP. Like they are astronomically against you to make it as a successful actor in Hollywood. Like the fact that I'm sitting in this chair right now talking about how I got to be Kurt Warner and his biopic at a press junket for movies like this is it's very rarefied air so i had to fight a long time and believe you know it's if the faith aspect of the movie is really interesting because there is the faith aspect of the higher power of you know really trusting god with whatever this vision is but there's also a tremendous amount of faith that kurt had to continue to have in himself it can't sure. just be you got to believe that you have the ability that you have the talent that you have the wherewithal the fortitude name, name it, that you've got it. Or, or if you don't have it now, you will have it. And trusting in the timing of how that all goes down. Kurt was having a hard time trusting the timing. We all do. Timing is a really yeah. hard thing to trust because it's completely out of our hands. Well, of course, we can trust all the things we feel like we have a little bit more of a hand in. And, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, Vermeil lays out for him, um, you know, it's what you learn in the, in that journey. It's what Kurt learned out in the in the desert, in you know, like in that yeah. time away where he thought he was failing, but really he had to go do all that to learn more about his character, figure out some things about the man he wanted to be. And then also the thing he dreaded or the thing he didn't want to do, which was go and play arena, was one of the yeah. biggest reasons why he even rocked everybody's world in the in the greatest show on turf, because he all of a sudden was playing way faster than most quarterbacks and offenses and defenses. So as long as he can figure that out, like you know, because the arena, you got two seconds to get rid of ball. You know, it, it was, that was one of the more fascinating things about learning how to be Kurt was Clint. My quarterback coach is bringing me through. Listen, cause I was like, listen, I need to know the difference between college ball, arena ball, NFL. Like what are the differences? What, what, uh, what would I be having to do in this scenario versus these? And, uh, and Clint, you know, he, he taught me a lot about each one of those various types of football. What's different about the rule changes, uh, 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 gameplay, uh, all of it. And, uh, and it, it really is, I think, so cool that this thing that, again, you know, you think that, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going in the direction I think I'm supposed to be going. And God's sure. up there like, just chill, just have a little more patience. Like, I'm trying to teach you something in all of this. And if you yeah. can let go of that, let go and let God or whatever, right? And then you can learn a thing or two. Well, guess all of a sudden now you're more equipped to go do the thing that you feel like is, you know, a part of your destiny. And that's exactly what happened with him and with Dick Vermeule. But I think in some Christian-based movies, there's there's like the Christians, there's the adversaries. And like once you win the football game, it's all solved. I mean, I just think that there was there was enough showcase of the imperfections in the story where you know, you're, you're running in the cold, you're asking for food stamps at the grocery store. Um, I mean, do you think that that just, the humility is such a key to this story too? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, Kurt is one to this day, he's still one of the most humble dudes you'll ever meet. I mean, there's no, none of that ever went to his head. Not, none of that success, none of the MVPs, none of the, um, he's just a, he's a real dude who just really loves football and he found his identity in all of that, you know, which can be good and bad. I mean, that's one of the things that I think he recognized was that he, he was finding too much identity and worth in the game, which was then he, he made it too, 
like if you're if you're if you're holding on to something that tight, it tends to evade you because that's an unhealthy relationship you have with that. And all of a sudden he found this other thing that was actually more important, which was his love and relationship with Brenda and the kids, and to feel that identity and worth in that. And there's something far more long lasting and, and deep. And, and all of a sudden then, oh, lo and behold, shocker, these football doors start popping up. And it's like, okay, I guess that's I guess that's how that goes. So, and look, and I, I do think that um I do think that. Well, I agree. You know, there's a lot of rawness. There's a lot of there's a lot of imperfection in 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 the story as there should be. I think there needs to be a lot more of that in movies across the board, but particularly in movies that call themselves faith based. I, I, how are you to relate to someone in their struggles if if the people that you're portraying in these movies seem to be pretty cookie cutter good and there's no real like we're all broken everybody's broken so the more you can show that vulnerability the brokenness and the vulnerability and the growth this person needs to go through the more other people can go oh man i i feel that i see that i can i can actually relate to that so i think it's important and i think we we were able to put uh, a good amount into this to to give it that that extra bit of depth yeah yeah and you talked about i need to to prepare to be a quarterback too i'm curious you know, obviously, Kurt had a big hand in that training. I'm curious if you watched any other specific quarterbacks. Uh, in my, I, I know you're trying to be Kurt Warner, but did you watch any other uh, games, uh, specific players to, to kind of build you your know, craft? You know, I, I yes and no. I mean, I was watching uh, mostly clips of Kurt, but then, of course, with a lot of those clips, they were within games that he was playing sure. another quarterback. You know, um, I watched a lot of that stuff while it was happening on TV, I, I'm a huge football fan to this day. So I watch a good amount of football even now. And I, even before doing the movie, but particularly now, I, the things I know about being a quarterback, it's really fun to watch Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady and all these guys doing what they're doing. And so being you, a little you think more, you could be, you think you could that? be on an NFL team now? Oh no, absolutely not. Not, <laughs> not a chance. Okay. Certainly not as a quarterback. I, I, if I could put on a little more now, I couldn't, I'm 41 years old. What, what are we even talking about? The only way to be, Older than 40 in the NFL today is to be a quarterback. I mean, you could, by the way, 20 years ago, you couldn't be 40 in a quarterback because the rules and refereeing were a completely different thing. You know, once Tom came into the league, there's been a lot of kid gloves around quarterbacks, you know, you, and and look, and and I understand the argument for that. Like if we're just injuring quarterbacks left and right, the game really does kind of get screwed up. You don't want to be doing that. But also I got, I give a lot of credit to the guys who came before who were taking some real gnarly sacks, including Kurt. Um, But no, there's no way I could be, I I would be on the sidelines cheering them on. You need some water, squirt water in their mouth. (laughs) I'll take your helmet, whatever. I'll do all of that stuff and celebrate with them at the end. But yeah. Um, no. So, yeah. So I watched, you know, so I, I had seen a lot of that stuff. And then also like I was at the super, I watched Kurt literally play as a, as a, as a Cardinal uh, in the Super Bowl against Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers. Yeah. And I still give him shit for that to this day <laughs> because you, you were it was so stadium? heartbreaking. What? You were at the stadium. I was at there. Game? I was at the game. Okay. And I was, yeah. and I loved Kurt Warner because because I loved him even before, and Larry Fitzgerald, and I was like, oh my gosh, what, what an incredible again, like another Cinderella story thing that's yeah. going on, and Ben and, and the and the mighty Steelers, and they were beating them, and then they gave Ben the ball back with two minutes left, yeah. and just marched down the field, and all of our hearts broke. But I, it was, I was, you know, he even still st- he takes that still with with nothing but grace and humility, you know. Yeah, I, I was hoping that the Cardinals that would be like post credit scene. I mean, are you, I, I've actually, I talked to some of Kurt's former teammates and asked if they'd be willing to cut like for a sequel for the Cardinals. I mean, would you be up for that? Have there been talks of that? <laughs> I don't think, no, I don't know. I think okay. Kurt would love to make a sequel because there's so much of their life that still hasn't been told, you know? Yeah. But I think as far, I think this was the right window of trying to, you know, cause you only got yeah. two hours or what, you know, 90 minutes, two hours to tell a movie really, unless you're going to make a series out of it. And, you sure. know, in that two hours, what do you, what do you tell? Well, you, you, you got to tell, Here's this kid. He's born. He loves football. Fast forward. Now he's getting his chance, but not really and struggling through college and what's going to happen and meets Brenda. And, you know, you once you get up to them winning the Super Bowl, that's yeah. kind of the pinnacle. <laughs> like everything yeah. after that is still interesting from a life perspective, but you you want to end on that high note. I, I appreciate you so much. And thank you. Thanks Bless a lot. You, man. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate All your right. time today. Hey, this is Cody Benjamin with CBS Sports. How are you guys doing today? Hey, Good. How are you doing, Cody? Good. I didn't mean to cram you all in there, but I yeah, we're we're sort of crammed in here. Three big yeah, guys. It'll, it'll make for a nice, uh, fam- you know, family Christmas card or something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I appreciate you taking the time. I know it's a busy, uh, 
busy junket and everything, but I, I appreciate your time. Um, I, I'll start with Kurt just very quickly. How many relatives have you convinced to go buy tickets on Christmas Day for this? <laughs> We're still working on that. Um, you know, it's so funny when we talk to so many people that that's their family tradition is to go to movies on Christmas. Can't say that we've ever done that as a family all our kids, we got so many other traditions, but uh, we're going to change that this year. And so uh, definitely try to put a little pressure on the family to go on opening day. Yeah, no. And, and on a more serious note, I guess, what does this, I mean, what does this mean for you? Not only to have, you know, your story on the big screen, but, but your family's story. I mean, because, um, you know, I had, I had the privilege to, to watch this movie early. Should I felt like uh, it wasn't necessarily a football movie as much as a, a movie about family, about marriage, about parenthood. And, um, I'm just curious what that means to you personally, Kurt. Um, that was huge for me. Uh, these guys know from the time that they got involved, that was kind of my vision for this movie from the get-go. Mm. You know, especially when you have a true life story that a lot of people know the ending of that story, um, that we knew that was going to be the backdrop. But with a lot of people knowing it, it was more important to me to understand how I got there and the journey that went with it. And specifically, the people that shaped me along the way. And, you know, when, when you think about the title of the movie, American Underdog, it's kind of how I've looked at our family, not just my journey, but my wife's journey, my son's journey. And so to be able to, to tie all those stories together with one central theme and to realize, you know, as you saw in the movie, one of the themes is doing it together is I've always felt one unique thing about our journey is Brenda was always with me uh, through it all. You know, unlike many wives were they're kind of in the background or you never see them or you don't know what Brenda was very much in the forefront of this entire story. So it was key for me when we, when we made the movie to make sure that that was prevalent and, and that she was a hero in the movie, um, you know, cause her journey is, you know, every bit as powerful as mine in a different way. And we'll speak to a completely different audience. Yeah. Um, for Andrew and John, I mean, when and how did this story first come onto your radar um, you know, as a possible production for you, and then obviously connecting with Kurt to make it happen. You know, it, it was one of those things that, you know, as sports fans, you know, was always kind of the holy grail of, you know, it, it was the epitome of, of any kind of underdog story. Um, you know, John and I started out as sports cameramen, and so mm -hmm. uh, both with ESPN and Fox and, uh, and did that for years while we were, had this hobby of doing film on the side. And so I remember I, the only Super Bowl I ever wore was in 2001 in New Orleans uh, with Kurt versus Tom Brady. And I was uh, I was sitting there on the sidelines. And I remember, uh, you know, before the game, watching uh, him, you know, interact and, and look at the stands and seeing this, you know, beautiful, spiky haired, kind of tough as nails woman sitting there, his wife, Brenda. And I always was intrigued, like, I want to know more about that story. And so. John and I did a movie called I Can Only Imagine that, that did really well in, in 2018. And that opened the doors for us doing larger scale movies that would fit a title like this. So Kurt and Brenda had us over to their house in Phoenix and we sat down. And the first thing that John asked them is, what do you see your story as? And Kurt said, I want people to know about the struggle that we had as a family, how we fought to stay together uh, with me and Brenda. It's our partnership. And it's really about the relationship I had with my my son, Zach, who's, uh, who's uh, got some disabilities and is blind. And John and I looked at each other like, that's a story we want to tell. And so we really had to pinch ourselves that number one, it hadn't been told. Uh, and number two, that somehow it fell in our laps. And so we have tried to steward that in the best way possible to capture the magic we felt as sports fans watching on TV like everybody else. How important was it for you, all three of you, to see that these struggles were shown on screen? Because I think so many times with Christian movies, we see the the good clean christian character the adversary and you know they pray to god they win the football game kind of a thing but in this movie you can see you know kurt is shown running in the cold asking for food stamps um you know there's there are struggles that need to be displayed here um maybe i'll address it to the, the Irwin brothers first um how important was that for you to convey that well i mean that, that's the truth of the story and that's why it's so relatable is you can't ask or a story where someone is as far from their dream as Kurt was from his dream. I mean, it was it was a dream that everyone around him would call uh, crazy, you know, and yet he had this faith uh, in himself and his dream in God. Uh, and and uh, and so it's important to show that struggle, because the more of that struggle that you see, the more the audience says, you know, maybe the things that I think are impossible aren't, you know, maybe 
the things that I think I'm destined to do or God is calling me to do, or I believe in my soul that I can accomplish, maybe I can listen to those voices a little more. And, and, uh, and so I think it's important to show the struggle just to show that this is like imperfect people where I love that Brenda said, and it worked its way into a line of dialogue because I feel this way in terms of faith, I'm a work in progress, you know, and, uh, and we all are. And so to see that, to, that struggle uh, and to see a character and a family endure and overcome that type of struggle is deeply relatable and inspirational to me. And, uh, and I think it will be to audiences everywhere. Hey, Kurt, you, you really pushed us to, to not make it too pretty and to really, um, you know, show the struggle. What, what, like, what, what made you and Brenda really want to not just do the kind of Pollyanna version of this? Well, I think what we realize is that that's real life for most people. I always say it. Most people have their supermarket moment, right? I mean, you know, we can see the other parts of it. And, and we all know that the dream is, I don't ever want that moment. I want everything to be great and it to finish on the top of the mountain. But that's not what real life is. And we've come to realize that. And over the years, that's what we've had so many people tell us about the story is like, you inspired me to keep going. You know, when I wanted to give up and when I found myself in that moment, just remembering your story. And that to me is what this movie always was. And you talked about me being as far away from my dream as possible. I look at Brenda and, you know, after she was divorced and her husband cheated on her and her husband, you know, it's like, I don't know, you know, I know what I want my future to be, but I don't see any path to be able to have the husband, the father to my kids that I want. And so, again, I think all those levels are so relatable to different people in different ways. And just like you said, Cody, it, what I think the beauty of this movie is, is not everybody's going to leave the theater going, oh, this is what I got from the movie. Because it, there's so many different themes in there. And you mentioned Zach. That to me, this movie was never going to be made if Zach's story wasn't told. And not just Zach's story, but his story and the parallels to my story. But maybe more importantly, how Zach inspired me. You see so many sports movies and I feel like the story is, okay, here's the, the young man and he's trying to prove to his dad or make his dad proud of him. You know, it goes in that layer, right? Like we're all trying to make dad proud of us. To me, one of the coolest things about this story is I was trying to make my son proud of me. You know, he was the one that was teaching me and inspiring me through it all. And that to me is such a huge message because we think to ourselves, oh, I'm in the position of leadership. I'm the one that has to lead. I have to inspire. I have to teach. And to me, we need to be taught and inspired, and we need to learn from anybody and everybody that, that God puts on our path. And Zach did that for both Brendan and myself. He taught us so much about what we wanted, what we deserved, you know, what we could accomplish. Um, and so that, to me, was a central theme. And these guys know is that from day one, it was like, we're not making a movie just to make a movie just to make a great, like you said, the Pollyanna or the rags to riches, it's got to be the right movie. And the right movie was about, you know, part of it was that relationship of Zach, Brenda to Zach, me and Zach, and how together and how he brought us together in some, some unique ways. Yeah, I, I suspect there's going to be a, quite a few Rams and Cardinals fans that are going, and NF, NFL fans, and they will get good football scenes. I mean, I, I think that the the Super Bowl stuff, I particularly like the arena league when you've got the farm animals crossing and then you're going in. Um, I, I think there's going to be a lot of football fans that are going and they'll get the football stuff, but they'll probably come out of it with a little more than that. Um, the, the faith element. Um, I had the chance to talk to Zachary Levi before I sat down with you. Um, and, and he talked about how, you know, this movie is, is very clearly, you know, God is, is an important piece of this movie. But it's not like uh, the movie's beating you over the head with it. And, and Zachary talked about um, how there was an emphasis on trying to be almost poetic and, and real with the display of faith in this movie. Um, maybe for, for John and Andrew, um, how did you walk that line? Because you've made, I've seen, I can only imagine, I, I know your, your resume. I think um, those movies are great as well. But what did you take from, from those productions and and maybe what what was in the discussions for this movie to try and walk that line of, um, you know, not preaching to people necessarily? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great question. I think, um, you know, we let the story do the work and we fall in love with the story. And uh, to me, this is an inspirational uh, love story and, and, and sports story in which faith plays, plays a huge role. And we all know um, Kurt's, uh, Kurt's faith. We all remember the Super Bowl. When he th thanked his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and 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 uh, and how powerful that was. But faith, I think, in this story, 
is this incredibly universally relatable concept. I mean, and, and, and it's, Kurt had faith in God, Kurt had faith in himself, Kurt had faith in his dream. I mean, faith is really the, as the Bible would say, the essence of things you can't see. And it's, it's this required thing to accomplish anything in life. And so we wanted to portray uh, themes of faith that, uh, in an accurate way, and, but also in a relatable way, no matter what you believe. Like, uh, uh, if you're a person that is as inspired by your faith as Kurt is by his, you're going to relate to the story. But if you're a person that has no faith at all, but has a dream that you want to accomplish, uh, you're going to be inspired by the story because faith, Kurt had faith in his dream. And so we wanted to make a story that was inspirational and relatable to as wide an audience uh, as possible so that everyone that comes to see it uh, uh, is inspired by it. And yet a huge part of it is the fate that Kurt saw in Brenda that rubbed off on him and how that influenced him in, in pursuit of his dream. Uh, but it's relatable no matter who you are and, and what you believe. It's, it's inspirational at every level. Yeah, Cody, I, I'd say that, you know, for, for, for John and me, uh, one of the things that makes our job a little bit easier is we're really specialized in true stories. And so we are tr attracted, to, you know, because we are Christians, we are attracted to things that do have a large faith element to it. But we try to tailor that to what is the real person's real life experience like and how to, what, is, what does this story want to be? So that was one of the early conversations we had with Kurt and Brenda is we, we don't want to shy away from your faith, but we just want it to be authentic to being a, a reflection of, of how you want to be presented. And so it was really a partnership with them of finding a way that really highlighted that. And our cast really took that on with Zachary Levi and, and with Anna Paquin. Uh, Anna Paquin was a, a tenacious kind of bulldog of digging into what Brenda's faith, what made it tick. And, and she actually added some of the best lines in the, in the film about faith, like the line about it's a relationship that came from her just studying Brenda and it's it trying to be authentic. But I think the sports context of the movie allowed us to tell a story that was really broad it was a mainstream film, and that's what gave Lionsgate the confidence to give it a Christmas Day release, is they felt like it played over multiple audiences, and we're excited about that. And I think I would just add, too, is that for us, it was really important that faith wasn't put into a box. It wasn't put into a building. It wasn't put into, you know, a scripture verse that somebody could memorize. It was put into relationship, and you saw the internal dialogue and struggle, which is to me, what faith is all about is being able to have that dialogue and have that relationship. And we tried to, to do that the best we could, um, where you could feel the faith and you could feel those, those conversations and those, uh, you know, that juggling act that, that Brenda and I both had without, as you said, you know, being something where somebody goes, oh man, they just hit me in the face because as all being Christians, we've gone to enough Christian films where as soon as that happens, you lose half the audience. Uh, especially in a movie like this, because they knew faith was going to, they know faith is going to be a part of this, but we wanted to make it faith in such a way that everybody could, could touch it and feel it. And they could leave going, oh yeah, that's, that's, you know, kind of very much like I said, to that's the kind of faith I want. That's what, you know, I don't want to have to go here and punch a clock and do that. It was, I want that kind of relationship. And that is our hope with this movie is people leave going, oh, I get it now. That's what we want. Right. Um, how often were the three of you actually on set together during this production? Um, and and were the, was there any ever uh, temptation to throw Kurt out there in some? Because Zach, yeah, Zach yeah, says there was a temptation. There was, a, temptation. There was pressure, begging on pressure, my part pressure. to get me out there and let me throw a few passes in the, in the middle of this movie. The, the, fact yes. that, the fact that Kurt, you know, the amount of times he plead, plead with, pleaded with us to make him the stunt double for Zachary Levi, and we and we were like, come on, Kurt. You know we can't. And he kept saying, I can still do it. I can do it better than that guy. I can do it better than that guy. And She's then, good. and then finally, where we relented is if that that moment where he signs the contract for the car. If you look closely at those hands, those are Kurt Warner's hands. Yeah. So, uh, so you know, we came really close to being football moments, but you know, we we the, yeah yeah. I wish we it came down to an insurance issue. I'm sorry, they wouldn't they wouldn't allow the real Kurt Warner us, to be tackled and hit and uh, and and things to that nature. So, still feel bad about it. It would have been amazing. Uh, but yes, I, it would have. Been. Sorry, uh, but it's. <laughs> I it's, would have thrown that perfect spiral. Uh, oh yeah, yeah it would have been. Would have been ironic. Yeah. Uh, perfect. It's uh, so, but I will say this: I've never had such a close and collaborative relationship uh, right. with. We we just were a team every step of the process, and 
And it was fun because they, they were involved every step of the process. I remember we filmed the movie uh, in Oklahoma and Texas and a blizzard hit Oklahoma. And we were like to call you guys to was like, maybe you don't need to come because there's this blizzard and it's really bad. And I woke up the next day, having said, probably stay away from the set over the next week because it just seems really bad. And I got a call from the, the hotel lobby desk and they said, uh, there's this guy, um, uh, shoveling cars out of the snow in the hotel. And uh, upon further investigation, it's the NFL legend, Kurt Warner. He's just out in the, you know, out stuff. Uh, so he was, you guys were just there at every step of the way. And I remember uh, one of my favorite moment is we, we dramatized uh, Wild E. Coyote, which is the bar where Kurt and Brenda met, danced, mm -hmm. fell in love. And we, we, we recreated this whole place and it was special. And as we were wrapping that location out, Kurt asked if he could just have a moment where he could, you know, the real Kurt and Brenda Warner could dance out on that mm -hmm. dance floor and, and the whole crew gathered around and they shared a dance, you know, in this dramatized venue where they had first fallen in love and it was really special. So it was just a collaborative effort at every step of the way, fighting to just get the best movie made. You know? well, I'll say what, what, you know, on a serious note with that is, you know, I think what really made this movie uh, as good as it is, uh, is every bit as much about Kurt and Brenda fighting for their story as it was me and John listening. And so, I mean, you know, the, the tenaciousness that really drives Kurt to be an NFL champion, to be a Hall of Famer, you know, extends to me, you know, still getting notes at 4 a.m. this morning about ideas, you know, and he'd get, I would get notes at like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and then 6 a.m. I'd be like, Kurt, when do you actually sleep? And so, and then I'd see him on air the next day, you know, but it was because he cared so much about the story and he still does that, you know, good wasn't good enough. And he, he really pushed us for to get as close to great as it possibly can. And, uh, and I, I we're, you know, we're grateful for that because I think it really lit a fire under us as filmmakers to do this story justice. And it turned out to be a really great movie because of it. I, I think a good opportunity to get Kurt actually on the camera would be a sequel about the Cardinals run. And I think that, uh, I've, I've, already, I've already told him. I've already told him. <laughs> okay. Don't have yeah. any of these uh, these part twos, you but know, Friday they, they, night. But we got we got, we got a lot we got a lot of stuff in there the, that we the, could use. They're, yeah. they're require he's requiring us in that one though to kind of have a little bit of a Quentin Tarantino ending okay. where there's not oh, a final there's... pass in the corner <laughs> of the end zone. But you know. uh, between the three of you, I mean, have you heard from from whether it's uh, active or past NFL players? I mean, Kurt, you've got so many you know former teammates or or even colleagues at you know NFL Network or, I mean, that you know you guys having worked for ESPN. I mean. Your, your colleagues in the sports industry in and around it. I mean, what's their excitement level for this movie? I mean, have you been reaching out to them? Have you heard from them during this process? I, yeah, I mean, I, I hear from, from people all the time and, you know, people in that world have said for years, you know, this movie has to be made. And I think it was more in the past years, like where, where's the movie at? Like, why is this movie not being yeah. made? Um, and now I think they're just excited because Everybody understands how the lens of sports has become so big um, in our country. And, you know, people look at us in certain ways when we're just, you know, human beings, but we understand how it's elevated. And so we just think this is a unbelievable backdrop with the sports theme that is going to have the opportunity to reach the masses. And, and as you said, you're going to be a lot of sports fans that come. I know the story. It's a great, what, but they're going to bring somebody with them that really doesn't really care or had no idea who I, you know, they bring their son that, you know, wasn't even born when, when this was going on yet. I still believe this has universal appeal mm -hmm. and can have universal impact because of that. And so that is the neat part is that the people that know the story are excited about it because it is such a great story from a sports perspective. And I don't think they have any idea, you know, what they're going to get from this movie when they sit down on those seats for two hours. Two, two little yeah, things yeah. that happened that were cool, Cody. Uh, uh, one was, you know, because of our sports television background is, you know, we wanted all the voices that were in the film to be authentic. And so we wanted those iconic sports voices, starting with like Frank Gifford at the beginning of the film. But, you know, uh, there was a lot of these friends along the way. So like uh, Holly Rowe was my reporter for years at ESPN. So her son, McKaylin, plays Marshall, the grocery store clerk in the film and he's an incredible little actor and, and, and does a great job. Uh, and then, uh, and then Brad Nessler is a dear friend uh, and Brad came in and voiced all the, the arena football games. But the one that I was most excited about is when we got to the, the, the NFL game against the Ravens. And when we got to that game and we're doing our homework to figure out, okay, this is the game that we want to portray 
uh, and recreate. I'm like, who was the announcer for that game on CBS? And uh, we started watching it, and it was a young Gus Johnson. And I was, and I, I don't think there's a better voice currently in sports than Gus and and Brad. And so when I when, when I heard it was Gus, I was like, oh my gosh. So we reached out to Gus, and when we did, we said, would you want to come back in and recreate some of this voice this announcing? He got emotional, and he said, holy cow, that day when I came in to do my job, I was a young uh, announcer. And I thought I'd been given this gift of this great game of Ray Lewis versus Trent Green and Trent Green gets hurt. And I have this Iowa guy that played arena football and I thought it was going to be a clunker of a game. And he said, and then all of a sudden, you know, the game came to life and I had no clue that one day it would be the, the ending of a major motion picture. And he said, it's really cool how kind of God works. And so he came back and revoiced the announcing kind of word for word of what he did, you know, 20 years earlier. So those moments were really cool authenticity. And then the other one was, Coach Vermeil, because Kurt connected us with both Coach Vermeil and Coach Marks to kind of get their sides of the story correct. And with Coach Vermeil, I just, he said, thanks for reaching out. Now don't screw up the story. <laughs> and not only the way that Coach Vermeil can, very feisty, very spicy. But then he said, I said, you know, what was it you saw in Kurt? He said, he said, I really saw an underdog because I had been out of sports, you know, coaching mm -hmm. for 15 years, 14 years. And he said, and everybody said I was too old. The game had passed me by. He said, but I remembered in the hallway when I pulled Kurt to the side one day and grabbed him and said, there's something special about you, son. I can't wait to find out what it is. And I, I was like, coach, can we use that word for word? And he's like, yeah, go for it. And so we included that part with Dennis Quaid. And we cast Dennis Quaid. He came back in and he killed it. Did a great job as Vermeil. And so coach Vermeil watching that, the film for the first time with his family, he got emotional. He and Dennis, Dennis were texting each other. And he texted Dennis. He said, you're a better coach for meal than I was. And Dennis said, you're the singular most important character that I've ever played. And so it was really kind of a cool. Mm. One. That's awesome. I, I could spend a couple more hours talking to you guys, but I got to get you to your next interview. Um, thanks so much for taking the time. And thanks so much again. Cody, thanks, Cody. Appreciate it.